How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Turning Red, directed by Domi Shi and starring the voices of Rosalie Chang and Sandra Oh. Chang voices Mei Lin, a 13-year-old nerd living in Toronto in the early 2000s. She has hit a crossroads in her life where she's torn between trying to honor her somewhat overbearing mother, voiced by O, oh, and figuring out who she is as an individual. This awakens something inside her, some sort of blessing or curse, depending on how you look at it, and whenever she gets too excited, she turns into a giant red panda. And now she has to figure out how to keep her emotions in check while navigating the hot mess that is adolescence. So basically, she is royally screwed. This may very well be the strangest metaphor for puberty that I have ever seen, but it is about the level of weirdness I would expect from the director of Bao. I'm sure it won't surprise you to learn Pixar has made yet another good movie, and this is as entertaining as it is weird, and it is very, very weird. The animation is fantastic, as one would expect. I really dug the style and the color scheme and the character designs, and the red panda is as adorable as it looked in the trailer. The setting of early 2000s Toronto was done very well. They really captured that time period with the flip phones and the virtual pets, and of course the boy band craze that was in full swing around then. In fact, a huge part of this movie is May and her friends trying to get tickets to see a band called Four Town which has five members. Why are they called Four Town if they have five members? Well, the thing you have to understand about that is shut up. The movie appears to be semi-autobiographical, and I really hope some of the elements of Domi's life were exaggerated in the movie, because good God. I mean, obviously she didn't turn into a literal giant red panda when she was a child. That we know of. But while a lot of what happens in this movie is very funny, there are some parts that kind of border on creepy. May's mom gets a bit stalkery at times, and I had a little trouble laughing at those moments because it was a bit much. I mean, she has to get booted off the school campus by security on more than one occasion. Being overprotective is one thing, but this is a lot. But apart from May's mom, the characters were a lot of fun. May is a total dork and not shy about that at all, and God bless her for it. And a big part of this movie deals with embracing who you are, including and especially that dorky side. I saw someone on Twitter describe this movie as, do not kill the part of you that is cringe, kill the part of you that cringes. And I think that's pretty accurate. Her friends were a lot of fun as well, and they all have very distinct personalities. Abby is the one with zero volume control whatsoever. She is basically caffeine personified. Priya is basically the polar opposite of Abby. She's the quiet one of the group. Not in terms of being shy. She's not really shy at all. She just doesn't broadcast her emotions over a loudspeaker. And then Miriam is somewhere between the two. And these are the kind of friends that everyone should have. They love each other unconditionally. They always have each other's backs. They are every bit as much May's family as her biological family. And while the character was a bit much at times, Sandra Oh did a pretty good job as Ming, the overprotective and overbearing mother. And the interesting thing about this character is she is very much in charge of this family and has a strong commanding presence until her own mother shows up and then all of that just goes right out the window. Grandma is also the overbearing type and it seems growing up with that, Ming took the wrong lessons from that experience and is trying to make Mei as submissive as she was. But without giving too much away, there is probably a very good reason why she never learned to stand up to her mother the way Mei is trying to stand up to her. Also, James Hong is in the movie and he makes everything better. That's just how it is. I don't make the rules. And as I'm sure quite a few of you know, this movie has some very vocal critics. Uh, they are probably a very vocal minority, but nevertheless, they are out there. And boy, I do not get these people. That's not to say there is no valid criticism of this movie. There absolutely is. But a large part of what I'm hearing is people complaining that this movie doesn't have anything they can identify with. And really? I find that a little hard to believe. I mean, y'all didn't go through adolescence, never went to school, never had a crush, never had parents that were overprotective, or at least seemed that way at the time. Sure, there are a few elements that I don't identify with. I'm not a girl, I didn't grow up with a Chinese family, but that didn't make the story any less meaningful. And then you have people complaining that this movie talks about <gasps> periods. 
Oh no, oh, oh the horror, not periods, anything but that. I don't want my kids to learn about periods. Well, I got some bad news for you. They're gonna learn about them eventually. Either they're going to experience it firsthand or they're gonna know someone who does. You can't shelter them forever. And again, I'm not saying you have to like this movie. You are free to not like it, but just make sure you don't like it for the right reasons. Personally, I thought it was great. There were a few moments that were a little, uh, but overall very enjoyable and another solid entry from Pixar. And it's on Disney Plus, so you don't even have to leave the house to see it. That's all I have to say about Turning Red. Till next time, take care.